We've got our three floor plans and they're each on a separate sheet. We've got the ground floor plan, the level one floor plan, and the level two floor plan. So how do we actually get these outside of Revit? That's a question that can easily be answered. What we need to do is print the sheets and that doesn't necessarily mean printing it to an actual physical printer to get a paper copy. Printing or plotting is what Revit calls, I guess, exporting these sheets into an actual PDF document. And you can see at the top, there's the print button or the print icon, or you can also press control P and doing so is gonna bring up some printer properties. So there are a few different printer settings that we'll want to change before we export this out. First of all, you're obviously wanting to choose the right printer type. Now, you can see that there's a Microsoft print to PDF, um, or there's also an Adobe PDF printer. And these aren't physical printers. These are virtual printers and drivers on your computer, which are going to allow you to print to a PDF, which is what we want. If you don't have one of these printers, you can go ahead and download what they call a PDF printer driver and that might be an Adobe program or it might be a Microsoft program. This will allow you to print to a PDF. I'm going to use the Microsoft print to PDF because it's gonna be the simplest one. The first setting we wanna look at is how is this file or how are these files going to be produced? Are they gonna be exported as a single PDF that are all combined or are they gonna be exported out as separate files, each as a separate PDF? And most of the time we want them to be combined because then we've got an actual document, an actual architectural set. And so once that's set up, that's fine. You don't need to choose the location here under browse. You will do that in a second. What we want to do is select a view or sheet and we'll click that selected views or sheets to be printed. And then we select which sheets or views we want. Now we don't want to print out the actual views because they're not on sheets. They don't have title blocks. So usually I'll just untick show views and we'll only show the sheets that we have. And already you can see we've got the one, two, three sheets that we've created. So I'm gonna check all of them and click OK because they're the ones that we want to print. I'm just gonna click no for now, but we can touch on that later. Lastly, we just wanna check the actual settings. As you can see, if we click on that setup under settings, you can already see that the paper size is wrong. It's not actually a letter size. We want an A1 size. Now the issue here is that the Microsoft print to PDF doesn't have an A1 size. We've got A3, A4, and A5, which is great. I usually do a lot of my documents in A3, but for larger documents, you're gonna want an A1 size. And that's where the Adobe PDF printer comes in. You can print to A1 or above. So if I just change this to the Adobe PDF, you're gonna see those settings change. If we go to setup and under size, there's a whole lot more options to choose from. So I'm gonna make this an A1. The next setting is the paper placement. Center is usually fine. The zoom, however, we're gonna to want to click zoom 100% of the size. If this is something like 97% or if it's fit to the page, then what this is going to do is cause the scale of the drawing to be enlarged or lessened, which is going to make the drawing not to scale. So it might say it's at a scale of one to 50, but in fact, it's 97% of one to 50. So it's gonna be slightly smaller, which is gonna cause inaccuracies within your drawings. So if we make this 100%, that's good. We don't wanna see reference or work planes, and this is gonna be automatically ticked. So those red reference planes, you can sort of see up the top here, they won't be printed off, which is good. Um, Unreferenced view tags, this is things like sections or elevations that aren't on a sheet. We don't wanna see them, so I'm gonna actually hide unreferenced view tags. Scope boxes and crop boundaries, I do actually like to show them because then it makes me um, turn them on or off inside the actual drawing, so I'm gonna actually untick those. This is where you can make it portrait or landscape, but we definitely want it to be landscape. And then vector processing or raster processing is gonna be uh, I guess a pretty important aspect for you. If you print this out with vector processing, it's gonna have a lot more detail inside of your PDF and each line is going to be vectorized, which means it's going to have a lot more information in it. Whereas if you rasterize it, what you're technically doing is flattening the image, which makes it a lot quicker to load. If you print this out as a vector, it can take a long time to print to a physical print because the printer has to read a lot more information. File sizes might be a lot bigger 
and loading the PDF might take a lot more time because it's just got a lot more information in it. So I usually like to have this as raster processing. Now, you don't have to do and go through all of these settings each time you wanna print. What you wanna do is now save this as a printer preset. I'm just gonna call this A1 print and click OK. And now each time you wanna print, you can just click A1 print and it will preload all of this information. So that's the last time you'll have to go through any of that. Let's click OK. And just before we print, that covers everything we need to do, but you can see that it's now creating separate files. So one of these options has changed these other options. So it's always good just to double check this. We don't wanna to have to have three different PDFs just for our floor plans. I wanna combine them into one. So I'm just gonna select that. And I'll just quickly double check the views and the sheets that are being ticked. Just like before, we can actually save this out so we don't have to choose which drawings or which sheets that we want printed out. If I were to tick all of three of these and save this as floor plans, we're now gonna have a preset of the floor plans. So if I were to check none, click on floor plans, you're gonna see that it ticks just those three that we've saved as. So this is really handy if you've got a different set for different services or for different contractors. For example, you don't wanna send the full set to each and every contractor. For the steel manufacturer of your building, they're not gonna look at um, all of the joinery and the internal elevations. They just wanna look at the different steel works that's going on inside your building. So you'll create a separate set for those. And rather than having to tick through each and every single one of your sheets just to print off your steel work set, you'll usually save one of these sets as steel works and then you can just choose that preset for when you wanna print. As your project progresses, you're gonna have a lot more different architectural sets with different sheets ticked on them. But for now, that's just something to know. We don't have to do anything with that here. At least we've got our floor plans selected and now we're ready to print. So I'm gonna click OK and we're gonna print this sheet. This can sometimes take a little while considering we've only got three sheets, this, this should be very quick. However, sometimes I've found this can get stuck and that's usually just a matter of one of the settings you've chosen. Um, it would usually get stuck a lot more if I had vectorized the images but once it's done, it should load up. Here we go, now we've got a PDF document of those floor plans, which is very cool. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.